But I remember sat at the table and I was like, right, two years time, it's back in Birmingham. I'm aiming to win. Next year's gonna be tough because I'll be bottom major in the 17s. Right. So mm -hmm. up against some good athletes. I'll try and make the final, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And I literally said that. And then I said, right, but two years time, when I'm at my best under 17s, I'm aiming to win the English schools. Okay. And I did. Which event uh, did you do? I went, well, the following year in 2006, I did the 200. Okay. And I made the final, yeah. but I came eighth because the guys were a year older. So I had the likes of, one, it was actually Tonya Corrigan at the time. It was a very, okay. very yeah, yeah. Yeah. Liverpool guy, right? Liverpool, yeah. yeah. You might remember yeah. him, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was quite a good youngster at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, James Alaka, Eugene Iamful. Um, do you remember Chris Tandy was the one as yes, well? Yes, I remember Chris Tandy because he, he was a good four guy as well. Yeah, very strong lad, yeah. actually. Um, he was in there, uh, they were my, and a few others as well. Yeah. Uh, they were in my 200 final. And I knew it was going to be a big ass, but I thought if I can make that final and just give it me all, it's yeah. a, again, I'm getting better. And then we went to the first ever UK school games. Yes. And I ended up having a very bad experience. I was actually quite badly bullied because I was with lads younger than me. I was with hanging around with people who I thought were more nice people. Yeah. yeah. So I was getting quite, um, getting quite badly bullied. And I remember one time uh, some lads would say, oh, do you know mind going up to check my room quickly first because I can't remember we were sharing I can't remember but they sent me to go up check my room for something I went up and I looked out the window and they all ran off left me in the building yeah <sighs> so um, and there was also a couple of girls who I thought were my friends from the track were there were just treating me like a loser basically and it was a horrible experience and that was another make or break mm. and that was the probably the fuel that made me I am today realistically because I said right you have to focus now you have to, if you want to want to make it, to you have to be selfish, yeah. ignore the crap, ignore the negatives and be a bit more ruthless with yourself. Be more selfish. Don't keep yeah. giving up time for people that don't give it to you. Yeah. yeah. So I used that so well as motivation, trained like typical, train like Rocky, hard, <laughs> you know, hard work, use that figure all the time yeah. and then end up winning the national indoors, beating mm -hmm. Antonio Fantino running six, eight, yeah. ended up winning the English schools that year, went to the youth Olympics for the 200 meters came second behind Remel Guliev, ended up winning the relay, yeah. and then run, winning the 200 at the national championships a few weeks after. So that that year as a top was age in the 70s. Really good year for you. And yeah. that was the year that got me to where I am now, is this is what I want to do now for the rest of my career. So that was your first experience of doing like international competitions then. Yes. So dating back all the way to 2007, yeah. that's been your first like, okay, this is I could actually do something here. Yeah. So was that the... Was the Youth Olympics the turning point or did it come a bit before that where you started to think, it was coming, I may have something It was here. coming more, I'd say, was winning that English schools. Okay. Because that was really the first time I was on Sky Sports. There's a bit of pressure on me, a bit of publicity. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as a 16-year-old, it can go either way how you let it get to you. Yeah. So I took it as more of as, you know, because at the time, John and Huggins was running very fast. Yeah. He went off to the World Youths. So he wasn't going to do the 100 metres at the... Um, English schools mm -hmm. and obviously at Tonio Fantino and I were running very similar times over the one and two yeah so, but he ended up doing the 200 so it kind of left the doors open for me to perform in the 100 yeah um and I obviously had a few athletes like Joshua Patrick to beat and William Miffy if you remember yeah. the name yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that <laughs> so there's some good youngsters at the time Enfield, then. that was an Enfield guy yeah, right yeah they were trained um there was two coaches at the time I can't remember the names very well Eddie I know Eddie Stevens I can never remember I don't think anyone yeah. actually unless she was in the group I don't think anyone ever knew the name of the other guy that used to um, <laughs> coach with them but I know it was Eddie Stevens because yeah. he had a, a really fantastic group back then yeah very good set of youngsters that yeah. had potential to go very far it was just how you obviously how you managed them and um, so I ended up going to uh, winning at English schools. And mm -hmm. that English schools for me was kind of a mess, a kind of a, a good subject for how youngsters can bounce back is whenever you go through bad times or mm -hmm. whenever you're having bad races or anything like that, you know, remember the people that support you, which is always probably your family. And always remember the friends who really back you mm -hmm. because you often find when you don't win races or you don't run well, it's very quiet. You don't yeah. get that support. You get a few people saying unlucky or there for you but mm -hmm. not many and even to this day you still get that even now as a senior you, you yeah. often find on social media how quiet your phone is until you run fast yeah, yeah. so as a youngster i realized in the end who my real friends were and who mm -hmm. weren't and okay. after that it kind of propelled me every year to you know better performances and getting better and stronger so I'd obviously championships year in year out but yeah. it always i'd say that period as a youngster is always reminding me of to think be selfish and yeah. be you know i won't say selfish in a disrespectful way but, you know, when it comes to your career, try and get the best for you at the same time. Well, track and field, I mean, it's it's a team <clears throat> sport 
to some extent but realistically when you step on that track it is just you alone exactly so yeah the selfish side of things kind of it kind of helps because yeah. the minute you come out of those doors and you're on that track and you're looking down that straight the person on your left and your right they don't mean anything to you no more apart from you're in my way and i'm gonna step over you if i need exactly. to you know you can't show respect to the start line yeah you know yeah you're, you know if you go into any race thinking you're gonna lose you lose yeah you, if you have one set of doubt you see in the in the warm-up area if you're watching too much what other athletes are doing that's yeah, warm ups the, yeah, yeah. The intensity of you get, warm -up, you're getting distracted you're getting you know and as a youngster i learned that quite well mm -hmm. you know um i also, also learned that size doesn't matter because yeah. i wasn't a very big lad as a youngster I'm maybe not really that big now yeah and obviously you had some very big youngsters then so so the size and power they generate is quite intimidating mm -hmm. but when you start beating them it's yeah. like well it doesn't matter it's all about what you do for you okay. and so i used to just and as a youngster I think you guys will agree with me as well. When you're a youngster, you have no fear. Yeah. You just don't, agree. You don't care. You just do it, you know, and you see it even now, these youngsters coming through because they have no fear. It's when you start getting older, you start letting those, not, I wouldn't say fears, but I'd say you start overthinking things because you want to get to the next level. Yeah. Or, you know, Would that be because of like sponsors coming, um, you've got more social media presence, you've got people watching you now. Would that be like the reason why, well, when you come to, into the seniors, you're kind of thinking, okay, I kind of have to do something here or this is going to happen. Like, you always have a precaution for what you're going to do? To a certain extent, I'd say, yeah. I mean, you know, when I made my breakthrough as a senior, it was a wake-up call again. Because as a junior, you're having a bubble. So you mm. know who you're racing, you know how to beat them, and then obviously you do internationals. Very similar. Yeah. It is when you hit seniors, it's, right, this is a big step up now. So then that's when you think, what do I have to do to close the gap? Do you yeah. let yourself develop naturally by letting yourself grow and eating properly or... Do you start training differently? Do you start improving on things? And there's, you know, there's always things to improve on. You know, yeah. technically, conditioning, mindset, approaching, you know, running your race. So you often forget, like as a youngster, what worked for you then. You try and yeah. use that what works for you even now. But at the same time, there's always things to change and so on. Yeah. And I think what happens is, is people start getting a bit over the top of things and start breaking it down too much. Too much. Instead yeah. of, you know, if you're in the street and you've got a, a Rottweiler chasing you down the street, you're not going to think high knees or jelly or anything <laughs> like that. You're just going to get going. <laughs> you know, you're not high, you know, you're just going to run. You know, and once run, the adrenaline's yeah. in, you're just going to go. Um, and sometimes it's the factor of just switching off and just letting it happen. You know, let the muscles do its job because that's what you train for. So just... Question of the talk when I'm stepping in. 30 battles up the Zoom till I'm sending me. I had to...